So really. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. This is the Jenkins LTS webinar for what's new in Jenkins 2.235.1. We're glad that you're joining us and delighted to be talking about things that are arriving or have arrived in Jenkins 2.235. Thanks very much for being with us. This is being recorded. This is a Jenkins online meetup. Our online meetups are community-driven meetups. Uh, it can be any topic about Jenkins, case studies, success stories, other things of interest. We also host developer meetups. You can find those on meetup.com under Jenkins Online Meetup. And we are actively looking for speakers to present to the Jenkins Online Meetups. We'd love to have your topics. Uh, there's a process that's described there. We invite you to submit your topic proposals and we'll welcome you to come present for us and share with others in the community. During this particular session, we'd like to do questions and answers using the Zoom question and answer facility. That allows us to see the questions and allows some of the team hosting the webinar to help us answer the questions. Uh, it also gives us a chance to help you interactively here in the session. After the meetup, we encourage you to subscribe to the Jenkins user and developer mailing lists. Uh, in particular, they're great places to help each other. There's also the Jenkins user experience special interest group that has a Gitter chat where you can join in conversations about Jenkins user experience. Uh, at the conclusion of this, we'd invite you to complete the feedback form. We love to hear feedback on how we can improve, make better, or strengthen the messages we're bringing to these webinars and to Jenkins users in the Jenkins community. Now, by way of reminder, the Jenkins project and all interactions within the Jenkins project are governed by the Jenkins code of conduct. We like to treat each other well, we like to treat one another with respect and with dignity, and we rely on you to do the same. This is a look at Jenkins LTS. We're going to look at new features and what things are described there. You'll see the URL at the bottom of your screen that points you to the Jenkins change log. It describes the current Jenkins release and past Jenkins releases, and will highlight for you some of the features and capabilities that are being added in new Jenkins releases. In particular today, we're going to talk about improvements to the Jenkins plugin manager, additional refinements to the Jenkins user interface. Uh, we're, we're delighted to have Tim Jacome with us to talk to system read permission enhancements and ways that will help you get more value out of configuration as code and configuring your system as code. We're also looking forward to Mike Sirioli uh, uh, talking to us. We'll look forward to his, his presentation on overall manage. And then we'll have Oleg Ninashev share with us on what's new in Jenkins core. What's next? Uh, what's new? It's all the speakers. I'm sorry. Thank you, Oleg. Yes, you're right. Oleg's correct. It's what's next in Jenkins Core, not what's new. We're going to do what's new in the first four items on this agenda. Thanks, okay. Oleg. That's fine. All right. So first, first topic is the experience for users and administrators dealing with the plugin manager. So we've enhanced the administration facilities. We've improved the notifications. First keyword we recommend that you search rather than scroll through the Jenkins plugin manager. So in the top right hand corner of this screenshot, you see Jenkins 2.222, the previous version. And what it shows is a long list of Jenkins plugins that are presented to the user when they look at the available tab. So here's my real demo. Uh, if you look at this scroll bar here, if I take away the search, that scroll bar is huge. There are a thousand plus plugins in that list, and it's almost unbearable to work with that. That's the old way of doing things. Now, if I look at the new way, it just presents me a field and I'm ready to search. So now it gets even better than this. So so the presentation initially no longer shows me the daunting list of a thousand plugins. It instead invites me to search. So search don't scroll is the first idea. 
and then it gets better from better from there. So let's go to the next, which is that it's got a better search inside the search facility. So in the old way, here, here you see the old way. If I search for Git, okay, Git's a pretty important thing in the Jenkins infrastructure. I search for Git and it shows me the first thing in the list is GitHub authentication, GitLab authentication, Git colony. Those are not the first things I need when I'm thinking about how to solve, how to meet the needs of users with Git. In the new way of doing things, if I search for Git, it shows me the most popular plugins first. And notice that it gives me hints with tagging and labels. It also gives me hints on version numbers and release dates, all sorts of ways to make my experience better as a Jenkins administrator. So sorted by popularity and we have better search. Now, when I say better search, it also means things like, let's, let's look at this one, for instance. If I wanted to do something with Git multi-branch, I search for Git multi-branch in the old user interface. Oh, it didn't find anything. Why not? I know there's something about Git multi-branch. Well, the new search actually does do Git multi-branch. And there it is. There's the GitHub branch source. Here are more changes that could be involved in multi-branch projects. So new search is just better. Now, multi-word search, yep, that's great as well. We love it. Now, in addition, there are now hints built into the, the plugin manager when looking at it that show me labels and indicators if there's a security fix involved in something I'm doing. It gives me a, a reminder about the plugin release date. So I can hint, oh, wow, this plugin was released just very recently. I may need to think more carefully about it. Or, oh, this plugin was last released nine years ago. Should I, should I be using that? Plugin release dates can help you decide which plugins you should use and which plugins you should not. It also has hints on plugins that are up for adoption. So if a plugin, maintainer has decided to step away from the plugin, they can mark it for adoption. And you now, as an administrator, will get to see, oh, this plugin is up for adoption. It's a good way for you to think more clearly and more cleanly about which plugins should, should you use and which plugins you might you say, ah, I'm not ready to use that one. So the updates, also are easier on you. So I'm gonna show updates in the old world. Here's updates. All right, my Jenkins here has several plugins that need to be updated and it tells me, hey, here they are and here's their version number, what's installed and what I'll get. Well, the new Jenkins user, the new Jenkins plugins, plugin manager provides not just what's the new version, but when was it released, what version is currently installed, and I get the benefit of all the hints here of labels telling me which things are involved, which tags are associated with these capabilities. So, oh, I wanna look at only the plugins being updated, which are API plugins. There they are. It was that easy. Clicking a label gives me access to all the things that match the label in that view. all sorts of new hints and new capabilities to make your experience better and simpler as you work with the plugin manager. So now I did see a, a question here in the, in the online that asks, is there a plan to hide plugin versions that aren't compatible with running Jenkins version? Well, plugin versions which require a newer version of Jenkins by default won't be displayed as available anyway. Uh, we actually had a good question recently on that where someone wanted to use the dark themes plugin and their desire to use the dark themes plugin, they were running a version that didn't yet, wasn't yet supported by dark themes. So they had to upgrade to a newer Jenkins version. Yeah, just to add more information to this answer, um, 
uh, Jenkins Update Center. So if you use Update Center provided by the Jenkins project, it provides details uh, for weekly releases and for five uh, recent LTS releases. So for weekly releases, you will always see the recent uh, plugins. For LTS releases, you will see only plugins and plugin versions which are compatible with your LTS baseline, unless your LTS baseline is too old. If you use custom update centers, then it's up to an administrator of this custom update center uh, to properly expose uh, plugin information. We provide tools for that, but ultimately it's uh, up to maintainers uh, to properly define plugin sets there. Thank you. Thanks, Oleg. So now in addition to plugin management experience improvements, there are also improvements in the overall user experience for Jenkins users. The Jenkins user experience special interest group is making steady and very interesting progress on improving the Jenkins user experience. As one item, auto refresh used to be available in Jenkins as a way to cause the browser to force a complete reload of that page. Uh, that complete reload of the page tends to be a heavyweight operation and it could cause performance problems. We've taken away that enable auto refresh. It was causing usability problems for users who they would have an auto refresh enabled and open a form and be dismayed when the form would be refreshed away. Uh, if you need something like auto refresh, that usually is an indicator that we need to find a way to automatically update the content inside the Jenkins page that you're, you're viewing rather than requiring that you refresh the page. And in the short term, you could use a, a browser extension that will do the auto reload for you. Now, in addition, Jenkins 2.235 has added tiled, tiled, segments into the system configuration, the Manage Jenkins page. So whereas you see on the top right here, configure system, configure global security, we're all a long linear list of items. It's now been tiled and the tiling adapts to the width of your screen. Narrow screens may get two columns, wide screens may get four or more. It's an, a much easier way to view and find those capabilities and gives you a, a, a simpler way to navigate when you're using the Manage Jenkins page. In addition, the, the core layout of Jenkins has been improved by using system fonts more frequently. Now this particular screenshot may be a little difficult to see the difference. It's a somewhat subtle difference. In the top right hand side, things are a little closer together and the fonts aren't quite as crisp. The bottom left, what you see is Jenkins 2.235 with a little more spacing and a little clearer fonts because of this, this change to use system fonts rather than the fonts that we were using previously. We're, we're grateful to the UX SIG. They're making great progress on the topic and looking forward to letting you know more about it during our What's Next segment that'll come up at the end of our webinar. Uh, next piece. Tim Jacome and read only Jenkins configuration. Tim, I'm going to go ahead and stop. Would you want me to hold the slides here or what would you prefer? Um, it depends on if you want me to show um, a quick example or. I would great. love to have an example included. If you're, if you're willing to do the example, you tell me when you would like it and I'll give you control. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll tell you when, when I'm ready. But um, if you just go through onto the next slide. Um, so read-only Jenkins has been a topic for quite a long time um, in Jenkins. I think the first issue about it was created about six years ago. Um, the driver for me for introducing this was to complete the story for configuration as code users so that users of that plugin um, wouldn't, uh, would be able to still view all the system configuration and help contribute to it without being tempted to make changes in the UI. So there's been a new permission introduced, the overall system read, um, which allows you to now have access to the system configuration, but no access to change it. 
most of the uh, so everything everything that seemed interesting in Jenkins Core is available. You can see the manage manage Jenkins page, the uh, tool configuration, the plugins configuration as code. Um, so not everything's there, but if there's something that you do want that isn't currently available, um, you, there's a epic that you can create issues in um, as part of this. So a long time ago, about 10 years ago now, the extended read permission was created. And as part of this, we updated that to use some of the new engine that was built to make the pages actually look read only to, to improve the user experience. And we found an agent extended read permission was created a few years ago as well. And we fixed that up to actually work properly. Um, and so now, you can also see agent configuration and cloud configuration if you have the right permissions too. Um, so I'll just give a quick demo on one of the Jenkins project um, CI instances that's running that has this has this going. So if I share my screen, um, so this is the Jenkins project infra CI. Um, I I just have the um, I, I just have read access to this. So if you see here, this is just me with read and manage and system read. I go here, I can see the build executors. Um, I can see the master configuration, there's not much there. What's interesting is that I can go to the manage Jenkins page and I can see how it's been configured. I can go to the configuration as code and I can view the configuration or download it. Um, and I can also go to the configure system page so that it allows you to enable your users to see how it's been configured um, and then they can suggest changes to it by the code. Um, and even if you don't want them to, at least they know how it's configured. So it's, it's giving more information to, the, to your users. Um, so you see here, and the other thing is that it looks read only. So as much as possible, we've removed buttons, we've changed it to change the behavior to show that you can't change them. These checkboxes are disabled. Um, inputs have been removed in general. Um, where possible, they've been disabled. Um, not everything. So everything that's controlled in Jenkins core has been changed. Um, but a lot of functionalities and plugins, and it depends on whether they use the core components um, or whether they're doing their own thing. And if they're doing their own thing, there'll be some work needed to update the plugin. Um, but in general, it works really well. And I think there's quite a few people using it. Um, if we just go back to the presentation, Mark. Sure. Let's see. I've got to find my share button. Yeah. So this was released as an initial beta in 2.222 LTS. There was very little functionality. I think you could just see the managed system page in the system info. Uh, between 2.222 and 2.235, um, we completed most, pretty much all the planned work, especially in Jenkins Core. There's still UX improvements and some plugins that need support, but the core work is all being completed. Um, and to use it, you just need to install the extended read permission plugin, um, and then it will automatically be activated. Um, and, and then you need to give your users the permissions. So in whatever permission plugin you use, if it's matrix or auth or roles, just need to add um, the required permissions, the system read, extended read, and well, agent extended read and job extended read. I think that's all from me, unless anyone else wants to add anything. So, so that this really is focused then on letting me define my configuration as code, still show to my users what, what they, the settings are, so they are not kept in the dark about the settings, they're not hidden from them. But then the idea is they will submit pull requests to my Git repository that describes my, my configuration in the YAML file. That's, that's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, either that or they know who to talk to, they know, they know how it's configured and then they can talk to the person who is able to, and they can also see who has access to do it as well. So the security configuration is there and you can see, and they can see who has access to do what. So they, they know who to talk to as well as another benefit. Excellent. Thanks very much, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think we're ready to go on to our next topic then overall manage permission. So system read permission was one enhancement in 2.235. Overall manage is another. 
Uh, Mike Sirioli is going to introduce this one to us. Mike, go ahead. Thanks, Mark. Um, <clears throat> so kind of in a similar motivation to, to Tim's um, overall read or system read, right now in June, or, you know, before 2.22, um, you pretty much was an all or nothing um, proposition in terms of administering um, or allowing someone to administer your Jenkins instance. Um, you could give them overall administer or not, and they either could do everything or nothing. Um, so that doesn't really lend itself well to being able to um, delegate some things that probably matter more to day-to-day -day, um, developers and users of a Jenkins instance. Um, while still being sure that things like security isn't being compromised, um, you know, dangerous plugins aren't being installed, or um, you having you know have, allowing you some control over over the um, important parts. And so that was a motivation for um, introducing the new permission of overall manage. Um, it's less than a, it's less than administer, um, but it still lets you. Um, manage a number of things. Um, right now, most of it is, um, the working core has been done since 2.222. Um, there are a number of plugins that have been updated and, um, and released or in the process of working their way through being released um, to take advantage of this. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, <clears throat> So right now you can actually like go to the the next slide, or actually I can just I have a little demo. It's sometimes it's a little easier just to to show what the difference is. Yeah, I, I like demos. Demonstration is great. If you're willing to just share your screen and show us your demo, that would be great. Yeah. Um, you guys see Firefox? We do. I lost a. Uh, I lost my view of what the screen is. So right now I've got, right here I have a browser with three different users logged in. Um, this first one, this is the normal, I'm a full Jenkins administrator view and you can see, you see everything you would expect to see here. Um, now in, uh, if you go into global security, and you're using matrix auth, matrix auth, you can see there is a new um, permission here in the overall category called manage. And so if you grant a user or a group that permission um, along with the overall read permission, that will allow them to first like actually see the manage Jenkins link here on the left hand nav. Because um, normally for a non-administrative user, you don't have access to any of that. And so this link isn't shown. Um, but you can see here there's a subset of things compared to the the full. I can administer everything that are available to a user. Um, and then within uh, configure system, you can actually still, you can, um, man you can manage plugin configurations that show up here or, or really anywhere within the UI. Um, so this is not super exciting. I don't think many people will wanna go in and change the system message like every day. Um, and the real power for this will come as more and more plugins um, start to adopt this new permission. Um, and it's relatively simple to, to do. Um, you basically just change permission checks from currently being Jenkins administer um, to Jenkins manage in your plugin um, where you feel it's appropriate and safe. As you can see here as a, as a managed user, I don't have access to um, configure the system security, for instance. So there's no worry that if I delegate some administration to a user that they're gonna go in and you know open everything up to anybody who wants to do something malicious. Um, another interesting thing is that this permission also works well with the um, overall, the system read permission. And so this is a third user I have who have granted both the overall manage and um, system read to. And you can see for this user, now they can see things that 
you would be able to see as a user with the system read permission. So I can see the security, but I can't change it. Um, and even within uh, configure system, for instance, I now can see quite a bit more, but I still am only able to make changes you know, to the parts that actually have been granted the ability to be managed through the overall managed permission. Um, and you, this is an opt-in um, similar to system read. Uh, there is a, a plugin called enable overall managed permission um, that's available by default. Um, you just simply install that plugin and you will see the new permissions available if you're using a some form of matrix auth. Um, that's pretty much uh, what I have to show. Thanks, Mike. Thanks very much. So, so for me, that configure global security thing is the is the 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 major one. It's it's that I can't I can delegate permissions to do many of the management tasks without allowing them to alter the security definition. No, correct. I saw shutdown was another one that there were some other things in addition. It's not just security. So. Um, you can, as a managed user, you can um, shut a Jenkins instance down. But that, so the, the sort of the guiding principle was in general, allow a user with managed to do something as long as that thing doesn't have, lead to a potential escalation of privileges. So run scripts is right out the, the window. Um, anything with configuring security. Um, but beyond that, um, we don't, right now, there's not a, a more fine grained way to manage permissions in Jenkins where I can pick and choose very specifically what um, a user or a group is allowed to do. Um, Thank you. Thanks very much. Much appreciated. So I think I think that concluded the the piece that you wanted to overall manage. You okay if I take back screen sharing? Uh, I am. All right. Thanks a lot for the presentation, Mike. Uh, if you have any question uh, sir, to presenters, please use uh, Zoom Q&A. Um, we present uh, new features. Many of them are in preview, and uh, any feedback uh, from you will be appreciated because it will help us to improve them. Uh, and uh, yeah. uh, any adoption and additional insights would be appreciated thanks oleg yes absolutely so for reference you can refer to the jenkins change log to see more about what's in jenkins 2.235 um, upgrade guidelines are also provided uh, these are both common features that we do for each new lts uh, we invite you to read them refer to them use them to your benefit Thanks very much for your in, in interest in Jenkins 2.235. You can find these particular slides at that URL. We'll also post a link to those slides into the meetup afterwards. We've now got what's next and what's coming. So Oleg, would you like to take over? Do you want me to give you screen control, Oleg? Or do yep. you want to just- um, I would rather prefer to screen share. Okay, great. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, what's uh, going on in the Jenkins project and what we are going to deliver um, in the next LTS baselines. Uh, hopefully in September, some features uh, might take longer. But anyway, we would like to share some insights of what ha what's happening in the project. Uh, one important thing um, that we are currently working on the public Jenkins roadmap and if you're interested to know more about uh, what's uh, in the project, you can refer to Jenkins.io slash project slash roadmap. And here you can uh, find uh, a lot of stories uh, which are currently in preview or in ongoing development. So today we have followed, we presented some stories, for example, managed permissions, system read permissions, you can find them here. And yeah, there is a lot of more in progress. 
I will uh, just share some insights about uh, stories which are strictly related to the Jenkins core or to infrastructure connected to the Jenkins core. Uh, so it's just a subset of uh, what uh, we are planning to do. One important topic is a uh, dark theme, and yeah, maybe you, Timo, would like to uh, speak a bit about it. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, so the dark theme was something that was introduced during the UI UX hackathon. Um, we've added support for CSS variables to Jenkins to enable easier theming. Um, and to make it less likely to break when Jenkins core changes. So now it's using a CSS API rather than targeting individual markup. So it should be a lot safer. Um, it's been released as a plugin that you can just install. Um, there's also instructions on how to configure it with simple theme plugin if you want to do that instead. It requires at least 2.239, um, so the weekly versions currently. Um, although the latest will be um, the best as almost every weekly uh, there's been changes for dark theme um, So the most recent will have the best experience um, it's, Yeah, it's a plugin hosted in the Jenkins GitHub organization and you can raise issues on there if, if you find any um, any in Compatibility issues or improvements that you think could be made um, but it's going quite well, I think. It's quite usable, and um, I'm using it every day. Uh, I know others are as well. I'm still yet to upgrade my instances to the recent Jenkins Weekly, uh, but I confirm that it looks pretty awesome and good support uh, for many major features, including console logs, uh, pipeline stage view, and uh, many other components. So now the team uh, looks really well. Um, if you are using Jenkins Weekly, you can already evaluate that. And one uh, notable change, which uh, Tim didn't mention, that uh, this um, dark theme, uh, it's also using another plugin on the hood. Uh, there is a theme manager plugin. So it allows not only to manage uh, themes on a global level, like you can do with a simple theme plugin now, but you can also manage themes as a user if your Jenkins administrator allows that. So it's also an interesting feature to explore and it's available in uh, the current weekly releases. And it should be become available in LTS in September. So yeah, it looks pretty well. Mm, uh, there are some open topics and compatibility issues. So if you evaluate it, um, please uh, report any issues you hit. So for example, here you can see that uh, there are some reports from uh, contributors who already tried it out and discovered some uh, issues here and there. For example, GitHub uses a dark icon. So you can see GitHub logo, for example, on the label screen, or uh, there are some uh, other reports, for example, uh, uh, cloud statistics is too bright. So if you see glitches like that, please report that. Uh, because yeah, during UI UX hard test, we already applied a lot of patches and we keep working on that. So any feedback from adopters would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm impressed with the ways that this can be evaluated. And in the dark theme plugin documentation, you had provided ways that people can evaluate very rapidly, right? There are all sorts of suggestions of, hey, do this and do this to help with the evaluation. Mm. That's great. Yep, yep. Yeah, and you can also, there's two, there's two modes in dark theme as well. You can either force it for everyone or based on system settings. Um, and then also users can opt in or out as well. So it's quite configurable. Uh, we run it with the operating system settings. So only the people with um, with dark mode with dark mode enabled at their OS level get it, um, and they can also opt out if they don't want it or if there's some compatibility issue that means mm -hmm. they don't want to use it. Um, but so far, feedback from users that I support, um, they're all using it. I don't know if anyone has turned it off, but I should check that. Who knows? But anyway, it's a great improvement and later we can add more themes to Theme Manager. For example, Neo2 theme and other popular themes so they could be added using the same engine. And there was a lot of groundwork. Uh, so yeah, I would like to thank all the contributors. 
we actually have a list of contributors here, but I think that uh, we need to update this list a bit. Uh, but yeah, this is a list of those who contributed during the UI UX hack fest, and now uh, I suppose uh, there are twice more contributors, so even more. So thanks to everybody who helped uh, to push this project forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Uh, I see the, there is quite a number of questions, but I'm not sure whether anything is related to the dark theme. I, I didn't oh. see any specific to dark theme. There okay. was a question. So, yeah, we will handle uh, the rest uh, later. Um, another important change we are working on is uh, improvement of configuration UI. Uh, so, if you work with current Jenkins configurations, yeah, you know that uh, yeah, they are really long. At the same time, uh, we use table layout, so you cannot uh, easily configure Jenkins on narrow screens. Uh, if you try uh, opening it on mobile, it will be even worse. It's hard to navigate through multi-level configurations. Um, and uh, as a user experience, a uh, special interest group is working on improving accessibility of the Jenkins project. It's one of uh, other projects on our roadmap. Yeah, I'll keep showing it today. Uh, if I find it, of course. Okay, so yeah, one of the projects here is actually improving um, accessibility and we did a significant progress there during the hard first and the later. So, and uh, configuration UI to tables is one of the staged pull requests. So it's not available in uh, Jenkins Weekly now, uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully we will be able uh, to make it available soon. And it improves uh, navigation a lot. So uh, if you're interested uh, in that, uh, take a look at the ticket I linked here. There are testing guidelines available right inside of the ticket. Uh, there is also a quick start to demo. You can just run it in Docker or you can uh, build it on your own. Actually, it would be a great help for us because uh, this change uh, may impact other plugin configurations. Uh, but still, we want to deliver that because it greatly improves uh, um, configuration pages. And it's not just a system configuration page, it's also job configurations and uh, for other forms like, uh, let's say, build parameters. Uh, all of them are actually in scope for this change. I've been, I've been, I was initially skeptical actually of this change and I've fallen in love with what it does for me. <laughs> it makes things much more usable from the user interface. I'm, I'm less frequently having to scroll horizontally left to right, even on my wide monitor because of this kind of change. So thanks very much to the people who are willing to launch this and for all the work that's gone in thus far to get there. Yeah, so the most of credits uh, go to Josh Soref, uh, Felix, and Tim, um, and yeah, to many other contributors who report issues because yeah, it's a wide change. So it requires a lot of testing uh, to move it forward. Okay, other important thing uh, which is coming in Jenkins core is improvement of external fingerprint storage. Uh, we have uh, Sumit Sarin, who is a uh, JSOC 2020 uh, student. So he is working on uh, providing a new backend for fingerprint storage. If you're not familiar with what fingerprints do, they basically allow tracing usage of various items in Jenkins, most notably artifacts, credentials, or Docker images or containers when you develop, uh, when you use them. So you can uh, easily see the entire delivery pipeline for a particular artifact or see where it was used in other jobs if you use uh, various job chains. And uh, currently this engine uses file system uh, storage on uh, Jenkins home. So basically you have to manage backups on your own. Also you don't have so much uh, uh, opportunities to query the data and uh, to process that. So as a part of the project, uh, we want to move it uh, as external, external um, storage, as many other items like logs, uh, configurations, etc. And it also allows to improve observability and traceability of uh, Jenkins. And in the future, we also want to support multi-master tracing of artifacts or images. So if you use multiple Jenkins uh, servers in your uh, delivery pipelines, you will also be able to use uh, this uh, tool in order to trace usages of these artifacts. Uh, so right now, this feature is in the preview. Uh, core changes are integrated. Uh, there is a plugin with a reference implementation for Redis, and it should be landed, uh, I guess, today, 
uh, this, before this meeting, we, we were discussing the release of this plugin, and yeah, I believe that it's released. So if you want uh, to try it out, please do so. And next week, we will uh, have a more detailed demo about this project. Okay. So what's next? Uh, we're also working on terminology cleanup. So in 2016, we renamed uh, slaves to agents, but still uh, there is a lot of leftovers here and there. So we are working on cleaning them up, including web UI, documentation, localizations. We also do planning for Jenkins Core API cleanup. And uh, again, we invite contributors uh, to participate in this effort because there is a lot of uh, um, uh, changes here and there, and sometimes you don't even need anything except GitHub or web interface in order to deliver a change. So if you're looking for um, uh, items where you can uh, contribute, it could be one of the topics. Um, and again, you can just open uh, this change and see what's inside. Uh, so here, for example, you open uh, this issue, and here you can see newcomer friendly issues. So just run a, a query. And basically half of the items in this query can be easily fixed uh, without any experience uh, of Jenkins contribution. So for example, uh, okay, you clean up a lot of that, but items like that can be easily cleaned up. Before that, uh, there were a lot of uh, examples just in the beginning, which were uh, not involving KPIs, but yeah, we already cleaned them up. So a lot more to do. Uh, we also discuss uh, other terminology updates. So for example, we had a governance meeting last week. We decided that we want to rename master. Uh, we will be actually la launching a public vote about a new name. Uh, so if you're interested, there is a developer mailing list thread where you can find more details. And also for white list, black list, and potentially other terminology, we are working on suggestions and replacements, and yeah, we are well aware about this topic, and we would like uh, to change this terminology in the future. Uh, another important change uh, in the project uh, is uh, related to distributions. If you use Jenkins Weekly, you have already seen a new Windows installer uh, created by Alex Earl. It doesn't include uh, bundled JDK, it uh, includes a lot of improvements for uh, user management uh, and the many advanced options. Uh, we plan to make uh, this installer available um, in the LTS releases soon. Uh, hopefully, uh, well, hopefully in uh, the coming months. Um, we also work on uh, Docker images. We plan to integrate all images to adopt OpenGDK. Now, most of them are, are based on OpenGDK, and we want uh, to extend support for platforms. So we want to provide official images for ARM64, for IBM S3. Uh, uh, 90 power PC for both Java 8 and uh, Java 11, and uh, it will help uh, to run uh, Jenkins on more platforms. Uh, we also plan to change uh, signing keys, so most likely in the uh, next releases you will need uh, to modify uh, um, uh, keys if you use, for example, uh, uh, distributions for, for like uh, just RPM uh, or up to you will uh, need uh, to um, update keys. Uh, but yeah, once we do that, you will see in uh, guidelines how to do that in upgrade guidelines. Another important thing is Jenkins infrastructure, because when you run uh, Jenkins, you actually use uh, the infrastructure. And right now, there is a lot of contributions here and there which will improve user experience. One of the notable changes today is, for example, on the plugin side. So if you go to the uh, to plugins Jenkins IO. Uh, you can uh, find that uh, there are already some changes on the uh, plugin side. So, for example, when we navigate here, you can see that now you can find uh, history of releases um, or list of reported issues right inside the web interface. Uh, there are still um, patches to be done, for example, support uh, for GitHub issues or support for change log MD files. But for many plugins, you can already uh, get uh, these benefits. And if you use uh, Plugin Manager uh, Mark Demonstrator, you can basically get to this web interface in one click now. So if you investigate what changed in plugins, etc., you can uh, quickly get this data. And hopefully, we will make it available in uh, Jenkins plugin uh, soon as well. Another important change um, is categorization and search for plugins. So you can see that uh, plugins uh, have labels. 
uh, and yeah, maybe API plugin is not that informative, but uh, there are other um, labels. Uh, for example, if you're interested in plugins for Kubernetes, you can just uh, search for Kubernetes uh, there, and uh, yeah, you can find some plugins. You can also find categories on the left. So right now, uh, there is a lot of improvements to be done there, but we started doing investment in order to provide better search and to provide uh, better categorizations of uh, plugin by default. And once it's done on the um, um, plugin side, we will be also moving it to the Jenkins core so that it improves uh, user experience here as well. Related change to the plugin side is update center improvements. Uh, because yeah, uh, plugin site as well as plugin manager and Jenkins core, they receive data from update centers. And there were uh, many improvements there. For example, Daniel Beck has created uh, uh, but, uh, flexible update center. So now you can, ac actually, uh, you can access available plugins for a number of recent weekly and LCS releases. So when I was answering the previous question, I was uh, exactly correct. So now for recent weeklies, uh, you can also get a list of compatible plugins. And there is also more metadata plan to become available for plugin manager for plugin site. For example, direct uh, links to change logs um, and uh, other such improvements here and there. So we will keep improving that. Another change which is important to Jenkins users is better uh, mirroring transfers. So we, if you use uh, Jenkins now, you may periodically hit the issues with plugin uh, not uh, being available. It's not a big deal in Jenkins web interface because you can just re-download. It becomes a bigger problem, for example, if you build a Docker image with plugins TXT, but the unavailability of a single plugin, if it uh, fails after a sing several retries, so basically it fails to the build. So it's one of the symptoms of uh, current state of mirrored infrastructure. We plan to expand uh, that. We uh, plan to add more mirrors uh, in order to speed up downloads and make the entire infrastructure more stable. So. It's just a heads up, and hopefully it uh, will happen soon. Another thing which is uh, rather focused on the Jenkins uh, developers, we are working on new release automation. It's already available for weekly releases, so we ship weekly releases for, from new infrastructure, and if you use weekly, you have already had to update, uh, for example, keys for Debian packages, etc. Um, but uh, the same change is coming for LTS, uh, so that for LTS we will be using new infrastructure, we will be able uh, to um, deliver LTS releases more reliably without delays. And again, uh, this is the change we are going uh, uh, to have uh, by the next LTS baseline. So stay tuned. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of uh, changes here and there. And if you're interested, uh, yeah, this is a great opportunity to contribute. Uh, you can test uh, the existing stories like uh, configuration tables to DIPS migration or read on the Jenkins configuration. You can also contribute uh, to documentation, uh, to uh, code. Uh, there is a lot of uh, various newcomer friendly issues you could address. And of course, if you want to share your story to present, you, uh, you're also welcome to, uh, you to do that. So here, this is just our um, landing for all the information. For example, if you want to code or if you want to improve documentation, you just go there and you can find references, including information for newcomers, uh, different queries where you can find issues you could work on. And yeah, Jenkins project is driven by contributors and uh, we invite anyone to join and to improve the project together. And actually, that's it from me. So thanks for your time. I hope to provide some insights of what's uh, going on. Again, it's just a slice. It's just for the Jenkins core. Uh, there is a lot of other stories and plugins like pipeline, script security, and other important changes. So you can refer to this roadmap in order to find a full list of uh, major initiatives happening to the project. Not a full list of all changes, but at least for major initiatives we were able to capture here. Okay, that's it from me. Uh, did we get any questions? Mark, you some, Exactly, thank you. There are some questions that had arrived. Uh, one was uh, sort of peripheral, but I, I like the question and I think we should hoist it. How long is support for LTS and what is the, the life cycle of long-term support releases? Okay, let me show the answer. So if you go to the uh, Jenkins download page, actually we have a special page 
uh, yeah, Jenkins download the LCS. If you go here, you can uh, find more information about our release cycle. So yeah, LCS, uh, it's a historical name, long-term support. Personally, I call them stable releases. Uh, every 12 uh, weeks, we select a new baseline. Uh, we stabilize this baseline with backport patches. And after that, we do a three backport releases. Um, and after that, we choose another LTS baseline, stable baseline, again, backport changes, and make it available. So how long the support for LTS? Uh, technically, it's uh, three months uh, at the moment. Uh, yeah, there will be a lot of discussions of, in the community about having real LTS, let's say one year, uh, but we do not do it at the moment. Yeah, so the, in this case, the the crucial piece of information for me is then that I need to I need to plan to upgrade about every three months to get the most recent Jenkins release that's stable, tested. And then within that, there will be roughly monthly releases that will give me updates to that stable baseline. In principle, yes. Um, in practice, you also need to keep in mind security releases mm -hmm. uh, because uh, yeah, stable releases, so they improve, uh, provide improvements. When you update to the new baseline, when you update to a dot version, you get some fixes. Uh, but sometimes these fixes also include uh, secure vulnerability fixes. If you run Jenkins in isolated environment, probably it's not a problem. Uh, but if you Jenkins instance faces public, you should uh, really uh, follow the security updates. And here, for example, uh, you can uh, find our advisories archive. And you can see that uh, the last uh, security release for the Jenkins core was actually in March. And before that, it was um, in January. So if uh, security is a concern for your instance, please subscribe to advisories or to RSS feed. And uh, yeah, we send pre-announcements about releases, but uh, this is uh, the time when you really should plan upgrade. Um, the upgrading uh, for other releases is basically your choice. You can use uh, change log. Uh, Mark has already presented this link. So here you can find all the information about what changes in the releases. And for example, here we released it one week ago. You can check what are the major uh, bug fixes uh, available, uh, being compared to previous versions. What are the major features? Basically, what we presented today, uh, and then you can make a decision whether you want to upgrade or not. So please refer to these change logs um, uh, to uh, make a decision if it's not a security release. Thank you. No. We had another question. This one was, I think, a little more peripheral related, Oleg, on further development of the subversion plugin. And this may be a chance to talk about plugin development in general. Okay, well, let's uh, spend a few minutes on that. Uh, so, yes, yeah, subversion plugin. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the current state. So, you can see here that uh, this plugin is up for adoption. Again, it's a recent improvement in Jenkins Core and plugin site. So now it uh, shows this flag, uh, and what it means is that basically this plugin is not actively maintained at the moment. And uh, we are looking for contributors. Uh, there is a process describing uh, how to contribute, how to uh, step up and uh, become a maintainer of a plugin. And well, uh, so if you're interested in a new subversion version, basically the best way to get it is to contribute. In some cases, uh, in exceptional cases, for example, here five uh, months ago, there was a release. Let's take a look what was this release. And this was a security advisory. So basically, a Jenkins security team cut a release because uh, there was security vulnerability and they made a decision to um, release it because you can see that it still uses, uh, being used by hundreds of thousands uh, users because yeah, it, uh, other plugins depend on that and it used to be bundled in the Jenkins core. Uh, maybe it's because of bloation, maybe of something else, I'm not sure, but yeah, uh, almost every instance has a, a setup and yeah, that's why it was released. But generally it needs somebody, if you have a bug fix you would like to see, then uh, the best way is to just step up and offer help because that's how Jenkins community operates. Well, and, mm -hmm. and for me at least, becoming a plugin maintainer I initially had the flawed perception that I needed to be some sort of a brilliant expert on some topic. 
And rather what was needed in my case to become a plugin maintainer was willingness to work on it and willingness to learn and develop that there were plenty of people willing to offer me coaching to say, no, that's not quite what you want to do. You should do this. So, so don't be shy about offering to help with plugin maintenance because you feel inadequate or you feel like you're not the guru of everything. Yeah. When I started developing and maintaining my first plugins, actually I wasn't an expert in uh, Java in any means. And probably I'm not an expert even now, but yeah, looking at my former code, still uh, uh, yeah, anyone is welcome to join and I wouldn't uh, expect uh, major changes in this version plugin unless uh, there is an active maintainer there. Might be not an ideal question, but yeah, this is the state of affairs uh, in the project. So, yeah, obviously, subversion is not that actively used as it used to be 10 years ago. Uh, many maintainers moved on. Uh, if somebody is interested, uh, you're always welcome to join and uh, contribute. Thank you. Now, there's another question. Maybe this is when we hoist to Tim on logging and verb verbosity in configuration is code. And I was assuming that the answer there is that, hey, um, we love to have bug reports. We love to have enhancement requests. And if you're finding something hard to read, submit a bug report or submit an enhancement request or submit a proposed change to the code. Tim, anything more you want to add on that? No, <laughs> you got it, Mark. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, just if there's issues, just submit it. There has been fixes done in the past to improve it. The fix is done to add all the attributes and um, try and improve it so that all the information you need is there. But if it's not readable, then just send examples um, and create an enhancement request or a pull request, and we'd love to improve it. Thanks. And then, then there's one last question. Oh, actually, yes, thanks, Oleg your pointer to the feedback form for the meetup. There's a question relative to a plain Jenkins container that I think has been answered separately on the list. Did you want to address that at all, Oleg, or should yeah. we just look at the form? Yeah, I had a look at the download page. Uh, the way to get a plain Jenkins form without a uh, Winston container. Uh, so Jenkins itself, it uh, supports, yeah, sorry, I'm screen sharing the feedback form, but if, if you're interested, uh, please, uh, uh, provide your feedback. So if you go to Jenkins uh, IO download page, uh, here you can find multiple options. So with different distributions, um, these distributions, yes, they come with um, um, Winston JT embedded. So we use JT as an embedded web container. But if you want to deploy Jenkins uh, in other containers, for example, uh, in Open Liberty, in uh, uh, Apache Tomcat, or whatever, you can just download a work package and uh, deploy it in a proper environment. So it's possible. You just download it. You configure your web container to use this work file, similar to any kinds of other work files, and you get it running. In such case, yes, there will be Winston technically in embedded in uh, Jenkins, but it, uh, the web container won't be using that. Uh, you will be using external web container, and you can also connect the authentication uh, and in some cases authorization to external web container so that you don't have to manage uh, it on your own. Thank you. Yeah, personally, I don't really recommend that, but uh, if you want to do that, you totally can do that. Mm -hmm. Now, back to the feedback form. So that was that was a crucial place mm -hmm. where we would really like users, uh, participants mm -hmm. in these webinars to give us feedback and help us understand what things will help them more, what will help them less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you spend a few minutes uh, to fill in this form, uh, it will be much appreciated. Uh, later after the meetup, uh, yeah, once we have video, we will be sharing all the materials with participants and yeah, we will also share a link to this feedback form, but now you can find it in the chat. Okay, so uh, basically we are running out of time. Are there any last minute questions or any topics uh, panelists would like to bring up?
Thanks very much to everyone for taking the time. Thank you very much for joining with us. And thanks to our panelists, Tim, Oleg, Mike, thank you very much. Thanks all. Okay, I will... Uh...